Hi, Gert. Uh, welcome to Singapore. Hello. All right, so I just have a few questions to ask you about this case or about your business um, while you're here right now. Okay, so, I mean, being an athlete myself, I know that being an Olympic gold medalist is everyone's dream, you know? So I just want to know what it takes to be an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, in short, answer would be it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of work. Uh, for me, it was, of course, a lot of setting high goals for 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 beginning and and just enjoying every training because <clears throat> i would say very big secret of my success has been just training in a happy mood so and uh, that's been helping me i would say much faster to my big dreams because like if you in a bad mood if you don't really enjoy what you're doing it's very hard to achieve your goals so I would say biggest secret of my success has been just training in a, in a good mood. So basically enjoying your training, making sure it's not too serious? Uh, yeah, like uh, it's a lot of joking in the, in the training of course, but uh, of course you have to stay also in focus, but, but yeah, like uh, more like fun way. Um, next week, I mean, what would be the biggest challenges you faced while you were preparing for the Olympics? I think the biggest uh, challenges were probably being confident about yourself because of course first when I got to those big championships I didn't succeed so and if you have already failed like uh, two or three years in a row people start to have some questions like what's happening like uh, he's, does he has weak nerves or like maybe he's never gonna be any good so just like breaking those uh, barriers that like holding me back and in one point I understood actually uh, failing actually teaches you much more when winning or succeeding so I knew that like I can do better I made analyze what was wrong and like when we made very simple changes just change my technique more simple and of course a lot of mental work to prepare for those big championships and yeah after like failing in my first Olympics four years later I was able to take a big success in, in Beijing 2008 and then of course it was a lot of joy. Um, you were talking about having confidence you know so how uh, do you have a coach when you're preparing for the Olympics and how important is having a coach to you? Uh, especially in my case like I had very specific team like I had a coach I had a physiotherapist I had a nutritionist and and also had a team manager and, and and team managers work was actually maybe ask different questions put up different challenges and actually our team did it maybe much differently than people used to do so so and and of course like i would say having a good coach knowledgeable coach and coach who has good experience is, is very very crucial because like if he has experience if he knows what he's doing it's much easier to like achieve goals so but yeah i would say like it it is very good if you have coach who has experience like my coach actually didn't have like a experience of winning Olympic medal himself, but like I would say that maybe made him even better coach because like when he needed to analyze more what he maybe what he missed or what he could done better in his career. So, and we did many things maybe differently, and he had made changes from his mistakes and from my mistakes, and it ended up with very great success. Awesome. All right, so like even for me myself, I have a coach as well, and for me, I feel the importance of a coach would be um, you, you would just feel less stressed because they're planning everything for you, your nutrition, your training, everything. Even on game day, they're going to be there telling you what to do, so you don't feel as stressful. Do you agree? Yes, because like, especially when you're young and like, you don't have much experience, even those rest days could be big challenges because like it's question of like should I just lay in my room and in my bed all day or should I do something active so and 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 especially in the beginning I think it's very important that coach really guides you what you should do and of course like when you get older like I'm already like turning I'm 38 now so of course like I have my own own experience and and already know what to do 
but but yeah in one point you start like maybe maybe making more your own decisions how to, how what's best for you but especially when you're a youngster coming up it's very important to have this strong leadership from your coach awesome all right um just a question do you always wanted to do this history have you been wanting to do it since you were a kid or is there any other sport you were into Actually my first love was basketball like uh, when I yeah when I grew up like I was really dreaming about the career in basketball like my big idol was Michael Jordan all my rooms walls were covered with his posters uh, so yeah like uh, for sure in, in in the beginning I was really wanted to become a basketball player but like I was from small village so don't we have any good coaching there so and then when i tried to sports school and to get a uh, scholarship for basketball i didn't get it so it was a big disappointment so what I, i turned into discus later on but yeah for for my first uh, challenge was basketball um we all know that discus is a very specific sport so what kind of training methods or training exercises did you have to do for your preparation for the uh, discus throwing Yes, it's very technical. So it needs a lot of work, but it's very complex training. So it's of course like a lot of throwing, like a lot of weightlifting, but also maybe people wouldn't imagine but we also do a lot of running and jumping. So especially I run a lot of sprints. Explosive stuff. Yeah, explosive stuff. But but also many times people are very surprised when they see like 125 kilo guy would run very fast. So So it's it's like a lot of I would say base trainings for those other sports too. But yeah, we we do a lot of throwing so I would say usually between 8 to 10,000 throws a year. So it's a lot of like repetitions on on throwing side. How often do you train inside and outside the gym? Of course inside will be weightlifting, your your machines and whatnot. Outside will be practicing the throwing. So how often when you're preparing for a competition, how often will you be training? Usually my training schedule is between 8 to 10 sessions a week so it's uh, it's a lot of lot of training and um, and i would say 40 to 50% of the time i'm i'm spending my time on throwing field and the rest of the time is like in a gym in a, on a track running or jumping or doing medicine ball exercises so but yeah it's a serious working week Uh, given your sport would you say nutrition is a very big factor in your sport yes like uh, i also had my own nutritionist who was like first guiding me and uh, of course maybe my biggest uh, strength was like i was from a small village and a lot ate a lot of like natural food was like growing around my farm but but later on like when we went more specific and like was also taking a nutrition as a very important part of my trainings we i need to wrote down what i was eating and then i got like very good guidelines from my nutritionist what should i change and i would say biggest uh, thing that i needed to improve was my breakfast so my breakfast was like too low in calories and and he was really pointing out that actually breakfast is the most important meal meal session of your day and and you should really it's like a gas tank of a car so if you start your day with empty tank you can't run too far so so and and this has to be of course very very like a lot of choices so of, of course fruits protein carbohydrates so and and since when you made the changes i've been also feeling much better and then my but yeah nutrition has never been problem for me so but especially nowadays i would say for younger athletes it's much much harder because it's so much uh, challenges or like uh, junk food, junk food <laughs> pizzas burgers coca cola so it's it's not easy to stay healthy but uh, but i think as an athlete you have to keep your routine and one of the routine is is like to having like very good meals like be- between tri- practices Okay, uh, who would you say is your biggest motivation? It doesn't have to be sports related. I would say my biggest motivation was my dad. So I was really like growing up and and he was my my biggest influencer. So I remember 
very clearly like one first time had my first success in discus so I beat like uh, our number one discus throw in Estonia so and and remember it I had waited this day very long time and and when I did it I got a phone call from my dad and first time you really said that like he's he's really happy about me because many times he was kind of critical so he never said that you're too good or something so but when it happened it was it was really special for me to hear that. Did your dad do any sports as well? Yeah, he was like a uh, very like active kid, so he did everything. Like he did wrestling, he did track and field, he played basketball. So he was quite like uh, good in different sports, but not in very high level. But of course, like till like when I remember, like I was maybe. 25 and he can still beat me in basketball so so he's he was he's quite good all right um what are some of what, what's an advice you can give to any athlete who wants to venture into any sport in the olympics uh, i would say first of all most important is to be try different things don't specific Pacific, get too Pacific too too early because like uh, as also said my first love was basketball but I ended up in discus throwing so be very like uh, try like uh, swimming gymnastics uh, track and field what works for you yeah because uh, it's very hard to decide if you haven't tried it and I would say best thing to try out and then realize okay that's for me because if you really want to get it to a high level you really have to love it and enjoy it because it's very hard to push yourself if you want to do something else in your heart. So I think that's why you need to try different things and then you, one point you figure out, okay, that's for me and then where I want to go for like all the way to the top. I mean, given your history as an athlete, even right now, has it helped you with, I mean, you're doing investing in your business and whatnot, has it helped you make an impact in your life right now? I think so because I think uh, actually having a sports background it's uh, it's very disciplined it's like uh, a lot of uh, goal setting so and you always uh, not only thinking that uh, there's only like uh, one possibility you always know that things can end, end up good and they can always end up and you have to be ready also for plan A and plan B so and and also like if things doesn't go as planned, always analyze things and, and make some changes. And uh, I would say that's the same, same principle in investing or making business. So everybody can't win and, and you can't always succeed right away. So it takes time. And, and I would say the, the biggest maybe principle what I've been working as an athlete and that also works in uh, probably investing market is uh, rush slowly. So that gives you usually the fastest results because if you want something right now, today, it's, it can't, can't happen. But like if we really plan it, it's, it's possible and, and sometimes good results really take time. So you have to be patient. Thank you so much for your time. We enjoy the rest of your time here in Singapore, right? Thank you.